I looked back at over 1,000 issues that people have had with OBS Studio and put together one simple video covering all the different solutions. You might think that your stream has no issues, but trust me, trust me. Once you're done with this video, the viewers of your stream aren't going to have a single thing to complain about except maybe your gameplay. It's not my fault you suck. And the best bit, I learned that there's a handful of settings in OBS Studio that pretty much everyone, myself included, is getting wrong. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. More on them later. As always, I've put chapters down across the timeline if you want to skip ahead to a specific issue, but we're gonna get started with the most common issue, and that's dropping frames. If you have viewers complaining about your stream buffering, the very first thing you should check is if you are dropping any frames. You can see this by looking at the counter at the bottom of the OBS Studio main window. The term drop frames means that your connection to Twitch or YouTube servers isn't stable. When this is the case, OBS Studio has to drop some of the video frames to compensate, and this can cause your stream to buffer for viewers or even disconnect entirely. Thankfully, there are a handful of different solutions that you can use to help you fix your drop frames issue. First things first, stop streaming over Wi-Fi. Wireless connections are unstable by nature, so switching to wired Ethernet gives that stable connection that streaming requires. Plus, it will help you maintain a more consistent ping in online games. Secondly, you can use the Twitch test tool to perform a full bandwidth test if you're streaming to Twitch. This is a free open source tool that allows you to easily measure your upload speed, round trip time, and connection stability to each Twitch server. Simply enter your stream key, set the duration to medium, and uncheck all of the regions that you don't live in in and then run the test and once it's completed you want to look for the server with the highest quality rating. If there's a tie in quality you want to select the server with the higher bandwidth and if there's a tie again you can select the server with the lowest round trip time. You can then manually select to stream to that Twitch server in OBS by going to settings, stream and server. Whilst you're in there you'll want to change the bitrate in the output tab to around 85% of the bandwidth result that you've got from the Twitch test tool. So for example if you've got a bandwidth result of 6000 kilobits per second, 85% of that is 5,100 kilobits per second, which leaves you some headroom for any variants or any other applications that need to send data. The third solution that you can try is to enable dynamic bitrate. The OBS developers introduced a new feature in version 24 called dynamic bitrate, which detects when your internet connection becomes limited and automatically reduces your bitrate instead of dropping frames. This results in a temporary lower quality for viewers, but it's a much, much better experience than what they would see if you start to drop frames. The clever thing is that once your internet recovers from the congestion, OBS will automatically raise that bitrate back up to whatever you set it to. To enable dynamic bitrate, head to settings, advanced, and then network, and check the box next to the option that says dynamically change bitrate to manage congestion. The next category we have is game capture. So this is actually any issues that you have specifically capturing the gameplay using OBS Studio. Again, there's a few different solutions that we can try here, the first of which is to run OBS Studio as administrator. There's a handful of games, both new and old, that require OBS Studio to be run as administrator in order to be captured properly. Personally, I've experienced this in the new Call of Duty and games like Valorant or Apex Legends. I'd recommend now that most of you just always launch OBS Studio in administrator mode. Not only does it help with game capture issues for certain games, but it also allows OBS to reserve more GPU capacity for its use and prevent your GPU from being overloaded by a certain game. Some games, most notably those with strict anti-cheat requirements, do not allow OBS Studio to capture using game capture. So when that's the case, you should run the game in borderless full screen mode and use window capture in OBS instead. Now a specific game capture issue that you might be running into if you're using a laptop is the black screen bug. This happens because many modern laptops now come with two separate GPUs, a low powered integrated GPU for everyday tasks like browsing the web, and then a discrete GPU from somebody like Nvidia or AMD for more graphically intensive applications. You can run into issues when Windows assigns either OBS or the game that you're playing to run from that low powered integrated GPU. So to fix this, instead you may need to specify to Windows that OBS and any other games use the more powerful discrete GPU. To do this, simply close OBS and open the Windows settings app, then navigate to System, Display, and select Graphical Settings. Select either Classic App or Desktop App, and then click Browse, and navigate and find your OBS Studio install. By default, this is in C, Program Files, OBS Studio, Bin, 64-bit, and then OBS64.exe. 
Once selected, click Options under the OBS Studio entry. And if you're using OBS for game or window capture, you'll want to set this to the high performance mode and click Save. Sometimes issues with your stream occur because your GPU becomes overloaded since both OBS and the game that you're playing both require GPU resource. Now OBS uses GPU resources to actually render a scene by adding in all of those overlays, cameras, browser sources, all to be composited together. The first tip is recycled from the previous point and that is to run OBS Studio as an administrator as this allows OBS to actually request and reserve some GPU resource from Windows. The second thing to try is to actually limit the frame frame rate in the game that you're playing. If you leave your frame rate completely uncapped in game, you're demanding a lot of work from your GPU and not leaving many resources for OBS. Simply capping your frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate can make a big difference. And the final thing that you can try is to build some simpler scenes in OBS. Every single source and scene that you add in OBS will require some resource, even the sources that aren't currently visible. This is because OBS wants to make sure that all the transitions between scenes and different sources happen smoothly. So if you are still running into GPU overload issues, reducing the complexity or the number of sources and scenes in your collection can make a big difference. Three specific things to look out for are filters on video and audio sources, some of which are very resource heavy. Browser sources as each separate browser source requires some additional resource. So if you can try and combine as many browser sources as possible, that will also help to reduce the complexity. This is why I really like the stream elements overlay approach where you can make one browser source contain all of your different alerts event lists, tip jars, etc., and then just add that one browser source into OBS rather than one browser source for each different function. Or finally, you can use scene collections in OBS. That's a great way to separate out the different types of scene that you use in the different streams that you do. This helps reduce the overall complexity as OBS will have fewer scenes and sources to assign resources to. If you're having issues with the actual encoding of your stream, well, that's because encoding video for streaming is a very intensive process and requires some pretty decent hardware to do it well. There are four main settings in OBS Studio that you can change that do heavily impact what's actually being done when streaming. These are the encoder choice, the bit rate, the resolution, and the frame rate. By far the simplest way to check that your settings are within the capabilities of both your computer and your internet connection is to run the auto configuration wizard in OBS. This will run a short test and output some recommended settings for your encoder, bitrate, resolution, and frame rate for you. Some audio devices that you use might not send proper timestamps, which can lead to various different issues such as audio desync. Try disabling the device timestamps in OBS by clicking the gear icon next to your audio source, select properties, and then uncheck use device timestamps. If you need to delay your audio sources for them to be in sync, you can open up the advanced audio properties and adjust the sync offset in milliseconds. If instead you need to delay your video sources for things to be in sync, then you can add a video delay filter. If the video source you need to delay is a window, game, or display capture, then you can instead add a render delay filter and adjust as necessary. If after all of this, you're still unfortunately running into issues, there are two really amazing tools that I think you should use. One built by OBS and one built by Twitch. OBS has something called the Log Analyzer, which allows you to review OBS log files for common issues and problems, and then also provide some solutions of how to solve them. A log file is generated by OBS every single time you run the program. So after a problematic stream, if you go to help, log files and then upload last log file, then you can actually click on the URL to view it in OBS's log analyzer. This will then hopefully highlight any problems and provide some suggestions of how you can solve those problems. The second tool by Twitch is called Twitch Inspector. Now this allows you to actually view some key metrics from any of your previous streams to Twitch to actually analyze the health of the broadcast and troubleshoot any issues that have occurred. Once you log in, you'll see a list of all the different streams from the last 28 days, regardless of which device you streamed from, so from consoles, mobile phones, or from your PC. And it will highlight actually the number of unstable events that have been detected. So if you have a high number of these events, you could be experiencing some issues and it's worth diving into the actual stream and seeing where these issues occurred. 
If you've reached this point in the video, you clearly care about the quality and production of your live stream, and I want to reward you by giving you an exclusive offer. I've teamed up with Epidemic Sound to bring you a great deal on their service where you can get one month completely for free plus two months at 50% off. I've been using Epidemic Sound as my go-to source for my music on YouTube videos, on live streams, on my podcast for years now. It's great for video creators and streamers to soundtrack their streams and videos without getting any copyright strike or takedowns. They have a library of over 35,000 different tracks and 90,000 different sound effects that you can use for alerts and things like that. Their music is really professionally produced and it's all completely original. The personal plan is perfect if you're creating content. It covers most platforms including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch and your podcasts. And with Epidemic Sound, you're still able to monetize your videos or your live streams, and you don't have to worry about videos being demonetized or receiving strikes or flagged for DMCA. So to get that exclusive offer of one month free plus two months at 50% off, use the link at the top of the description along with code GC50 at checkout. Thanks as always for watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.